Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do this popular handwriting animation style in Procreate Dreams. You don't have to use the Disney logo. You can actually use any sort of handwritten text that you've done yourself or handwritten font logo. Today, I'm gonna to show you just how easy it is to do this in Procreate Dreams. So I've got my logo in here and it's a PNG, so it's on a transparent background. And I have a layer down here, just any sort of color that you want that'll go with your logo. In the past, when I've taught this, what we've done is we've erased the logo backwards and then played it forward and that made it look like our handwritten font or handwritten logo was being written on and animated on. But this time, what we're gonna do is on the layer right above our logo, we're going to just draw directly over top of our logo. We'll go frame by frame, little bit by bit, so not as much as this and we'll go super detailed. But then all we'll have to do is select all of those frames, group them, and then turn that group into a layer mask. And as you can see there, that layer mask reveals what's below it. So if we come back into here, you can see that only the parts that I've drawn over are visible. All right, so if we go frame by frame, we'll be drawing on the Disney logo. But of course, if we turn the layer mask on at the very beginning, it's gonna be hard to know where exactly to draw. So we're gonna draw over top first and then turn it into a layer mask afterwards. Okay, so back where we were, we've got the logo on one track, the background color on a different track, and on the track right above our logo, we're gonna start drawing frame by frame over top. I'll go into flipbook mode just so you can see things a little better. All right, pick a clean brush, maybe like the hard airbrush, and you just wanna make sure that the size is big enough that when you draw, it's drawing over top of all of the logo. I might wanna go just a little bit bigger, and there's no white below it. But don't go too big that as you come through some of these cross sections, you're getting too much of a line that you haven't drawn yet. And now we're just gonna draw bit by bit, and the only tedious part is that you're going to duplicate every frame so that you don't have to redraw all of this over and over again. Now you can go back and forth and check the spacing of your onion skins. Just pay attention to the speed. You can always go back and add frames if you need to slow it down or remove frames if you're wanting to speed things up through your animation. But just pay a bit of attention to the spacing and the speed of your animation so that you're not doing more work than you need to. Now when you do come to a cross section like this and it is too big, it's totally fine to just readjust your brush size a little bit and see if you can get a clean line straight through. And if you do have a little bit of white showing, just go over and color it. None of this janky line work around the edges is gonna be shown because if you remember, once we turn it into a layer mask, it's gonna disappear and it's gonna reveal the logo right below it. I'm now gonna pick up my pencil or metaphorically pick up the pencil that's drawing this Disney logo and draw this little line coming straight through for the D. But instead of the animation coming in consecutively or afterwards, I'm gonna actually back up a couple frames and have the animation start kind of overlapped as this animation is finishing. It might speed things up and look a little more fluid. And now just keep going. And I think I'm gonna come back to this eye a little bit later once I see how the motion is feeling for the rest of this. Don't forget to duplicate your frames, otherwise you're gonna be redrawing everything. And another tricky spot, just making sure I don't touch this bottom part before the ink would naturally come to that spot. You can see right here, it's really close and I'm just trying to be careful that it doesn't touch this part too soon. We're almost to the end here. And as I get to the end, I'm gonna just slow down the motion a little bit, which means I'm gonna draw the spacing between each frame just a, 
a hair closer together. Things are going to start to get closer together near the end. I want to watch it back, and that's feeling really good. It slows down at the end, which I like. We could go a little faster in the middle if we want, but I'm going to show you some other things which will make it look pretty good. And I think I'm going to do the eye right around here. Because I didn't duplicate it with the other frames. I'm just going to draw over it right here. And since we're going to end up grouping all these frames together in the end anyways, we can just group this with it. We can go fill duration and also come to the end of this and have this final frame also fill duration. We'll come to the timeline edit tool, select all of these frames, group them. Let's make sure it's on the track right above the logo here. Come out of the timeline edit tool, tap and hold and go to layer mask. All right. Let's see if this looks good. Now there's a couple spots you can kind of see right here where I want to clean this up a little bit, which we can do pretty easily. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, but we can do that pretty fast now that we're in the layer mask mode. Come back to the draw and paint mode and go to our eraser and just smooth this out. Now, what if we want to spice things up a little, add a bit of color? I'm going to show you one way to do that. What we're going to do is come up to the Timeline Edit tool, select both our layers here, turn them into a group. Now copy that group and paste it below. Let's line it up. We're going to open that group and right above our layer mask, let's add a track copy our layer mask to that track and let's turn this track into a clipping mask. All right, close that group, go to this top group and just offset it by one or two frames. And now you can see just a little bit of pink coming in. All we did here was this clipping mask made it so we were not only revealing the logo, but we were painting that pink onto the logo as well. But since we did it underneath this logo and offset it, we're revealing the pink logo first and then revealing the white logo on top of it. You could repeat this step as many times as you want if you wanted a rainbow of colors revealing the logo. And now the last thing I'm gonna do on the track at the very end here is come to the draw and paint. And I'm just gonna draw a couple droplets splattering off of the end here. And that does it. I added some drips to the end, some highlights. A lot of this you can really just experiment on your own, add some tracks, try some things. If you really wanna dive into what I did here and check out the highlights that I added, the different drips, you can grab this project file in the link in the description. All right, I hope you found this helpful and stay tuned for the next video.